please avoid it. Turkey Max gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw that she had done it, she gave her father 41. <laughs> Lion's Den Theatre is pleased to present two five-minute mysteries. Brought to you by the magic of cell phones, tablets, and laptops, this production was recorded during a period of social isolation, restriction, and distancing, and compiled for your enjoyment by Lion's Den Theatre. This production features Gina DeFlavio, Aaron Gillis, Sean Maggio, Colleen McIsaac, and James Thompson. And now, from Halifax to Cape Breton Island, we are pleased to bring you The Murder of Miss Brooks and Death Calls at Dinner. It's a five minute mystery. Can you solve the mystery? <laughs> One more block, and you'll behold the Brooks household. Two whole years, Jim? It just doesn't seem possible it's been so long. You and Dorothy married and with a place of your own. Ah, it's true, all right. Only too bad you haven't taken advantage of the old Brooks hospitality sooner. Well, I'm here now, and I intend on having a perfectly wonderful time. Now, here we are. Oh, what a charming place this is. Dorothy's probably on pins and needles, just waiting for me to get you here. Darling, it's Jim. Hey, here's Alice. Jim, look. What? Where? There, on the living room floor. It's, it's Dorothy. Dead. Mr. Brooks, I'm afraid you and Miss Manning will have to submit to some routine questions. I'll be happy to help in any way I can, Inspector. Thank you, Miss Manning. Now, Mr. Brooks, while we're waiting for some information I phoned for... I want you to tell me exactly what happened this morning. Well, there's nothing much to tell. Both my wife and I were quite excited, expecting Alice, uh, that is, Ms. Manning here, to visit us from Chicago. I was to wait until she called me at the office. And you were there all morning? Yes, uh, until Miss Manning's train arrived and we came out here. I had written Mrs. Brooks to tell her that I would call Jim at the office as soon as I arrived, and the train was an hour late. Maybe if it had been here earlier, it may have prevented this. Well, that remains to be seen. Apparently, Mrs. Brooks was sitting here in this chair, putting red polish on her fingernails when she was shot from behind. The polish has spilled all over the carpet, and she was still holding the tiny brush in her hand. She must have recognized her attacker, and since she did not die instantly, she printed these three initials here on the floor with the polish. D-O-C. Uh... D-O-C. I wish we could tell you whose initials she was trying to reveal. You're sure you don't know anyone whose name would fit that? Positive. I, I can't even begin to start to imagine whose they might be. <gasps> oh, oh. Yes, Miss Manning. Can you think of someone with those initials? Well, well, I... I... D-O-C spells Doc, and it's Mr. Brooks's nickname. Why, 
It, it can't be. Well, I haven't been called Doc for over two years. It was a nickname I picked up in school. My wife didn't like the name and, and never used it. No one in New York even knows me by Doc. Well, you've got to believe me, Inspector. It's the truth. Hmm. Well, that we'll see. Just a minute. Hello? Yes, Grady. Yes. I see. Well, it's sewed up anyway. Thanks. Well, you will both be happy to know that our little murder is solved. Oh, then... then it wasn't Doc, after all? No, Miss Manning, it wasn't Doc. I'm arresting you, Miss Manning, for the murder of Dorothy Brooks. How dare you arrest me? I was still on the train. Have you solved the mystery? How dare you arrest me? I was still on the train. Your train wasn't late, Miss Manning. That phone call just verified the fact. You came out here, murdered Mrs. Brooks, returned to the station, and called Mr. Brooks to pick you up. That wasn't what really gave you away, though, Miss Manning. Too bad you didn't know Mr. Brooks was no longer called Doc when you printed those letters on the carpet. The next time you leave a name as a clue to throw suspicion, you'd better get the name right. But of course... There won't be a next time. Will there, Miss Manning? It's a five-minute mystery. Can you solve the mystery? Best lemon pie I've ever tasted, Mary. Oh, really? I wish my wife could do as well. Hey, it doesn't look like Sam is appreciating it much. Goodness, dear, is my cooking that bad? <laughs> Sam, your head is practically in your plate. I guess he's fallen asleep, everyone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, that's all right. Sam, Sam, sit up. Sam, it's dreadful. I'd better shake him. Sam, Sam! Great guns! He's dead! How do you do? I'm Sergeant Baker, the Homicide Division, and this is one of my boys, Mike Grady. Where's the body? He's in the dining room, at the table. Hmm. You may as well be comfortable, everybody. This will just take a little while. Hmm. Dead, all right. Peaceful, too. Who's Mrs. Sam Brown? I am. You mind telling me what happened? I guess not. I'm so shocked. I don't know where to begin or what to tell you. Well, you might as well begin by telling me what you served for dinner. Well, uh, we had soup. Soup? What kind? Mushroom, and then roast chicken, green peas, mashed potatoes, and I served him coffee, but I don't see how this could mean anything. Just routine, Mrs. Brown. Did Mr. Brown eat everything? Yes, he did. He seemed to fall asleep over his coffee. Mm hmm And when I tried to wake him, I found he'd had a heart attack. Yeah. That will be all for a few minutes, Mrs. Brown. We want to take a look around. Uh, notice anything about this table, Mike? No, Chief. Can't say as I do. Neither do I. Let's look in the kitchen. An orderly person, isn't she? Stacked dishes after each course. Yes, and here's the silverware over here. Ah, uh, look, 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 Chief. One of these soup spoons has turned black. Black? Let me see it. The only spoon that's tarnished, too. Well, I was beginning to think it was a heart attack or a perfect murder, but this silver soup spoon is evidence enough. Uh, Mrs. Brown? Yes? I'm sorry to interrupt your little party, Mrs. Brown, but I'm sure your guests won't mind. Uh, I don't understand. You will, Mrs. Brown, you will. You see, you're under arrest for the murder of your husband. <laughs> Have you solved the mystery? How did you know it was homicide? Mrs. Brown took careful pains to wash the soup pans and soup dishes before she served the rest of the meal. 
Ah, yes, I can see that. But she forgot one thing, to wash the silver soup spoons. What she didn't realize was that an hour later, by the end of dinner, the spoon her husband had used to eat his toadstool soup would give her away. She didn't know that toadstools make silver turn black. Mrs. Brown almost committed the perfect murder, but she forgot to wash one spoon. Five Minute Mysteries featured Sean Maggio as Jim, Gina DeFlavio as Alice, Colleen McIsaac as Sergeant Baker, Keith Morrison as George, Aaron Gillis as Mary, and James Thompson as Mike. These scripts were originally produced for syndication and aired on various North American radio stations. This recreation was directed by Keith Morrison and was presented by Lion's Den Theatre. For more information and upcoming Lion's Den Theatre productions, please join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Lion's Den Theatre, follow us on Twitter at Lion's Den Theatre, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your announcer, Jen Tubbard, and from everyone here, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay safe.